Hello and welcome to the SRCC podcast. My name is Shauna Kelly and I am one of the project workers here in the centre. Sligo Rape Crisis Centre offers support to anyone who has been affected by sexual violence. We are here to listen. We offer information, advice and a range of supports across Sligo, Leitrim and Cavan. You can contact us on 1800 750 780 or info at srcc.ie. Here with me today is Jer Campbell, a psychotherapist and poetry therapy practitioner. Jer has been facilitating our creative writing groups for clients for the past three years. These groups have proven very popular and today we will learn a little bit more about what exactly poetry therapy is and how it can support people on their healing journeys. Okay, Jerry, so to start, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, as you know, I'm Jar Campbell and I live in a small village called Innesteeg, which is in County Kilkenny in the southeast of Ireland. I'm a counsellor, a psychotherapist, a clinical supervisor and mentor supervisor in poetry therapy. I also lectured from Maynooth University on the CERT and Diploma in Addiction Studies. <clears throat> My master's was in adult ed, so I consider myself an adult educator just as much as a therapist. I have a small private practice and I work mainly online. And I think COVID really impacted on people's work styles And I find it's so much easier to work with clients via Zoom or whatever social platform suits them best. Thanks, Jer. Can you explain a little bit about what exactly poetry therapy is? Well, I'll try, (laughs) Shauna. Poetry therapy is a form of expressive arts therapy. It involves the therapeutic use of poems, narratives and other spoken or written media to promote well-being and healing. And that's the crux of it, to promote well-being and healing. So therapists can use existing poems and literature with clients and they can also encourage clients to produce their own poems and prose as a way of expressing deep-seated emotions. A trained poetry therapist will always work in a safe, non-judgmental way thus allowing the client to explore their written expressions and emotional responses. A poetry therapy practitioner undertakes their training with an accredited supervisor mentor and a mentor will accompany the trainee throughout the training journey till they reach the final stage of credentialing as a poetry therapy practitioner. The training can take from two to five years, depending on whether a trainee wants to take it slowly or wants to get to the finishing post by a certain time. Every trainee is unique and a mentor works at the trainee's pace. And can you tell us a little bit about the history of using poetry as therapy? I can. I can I can share a little bit about it. So the whole concept of using words for healing can be traced back to the ancient Greeks and the Egyptians. As far back as 4000 BC, Egyptian healers and priests wrote words on papyrus, dissolved them in liquid and gave them to those who were ill as a form of medicine. So they drank the the words, the dissolved words down as that was their medicine. And um, there was probably an element of high drama and dancing around waving bones. But if the person believed in the magic of the medicine, then who knows, it may have worked. Ritual and chant have always been used by shamans and priests. If a person believed that the priest had power and magic that would heal them, then who's to say it didn't work? We weren't there, so we've no idea. But there is evidence to show that words combined with chant and ritual and ceremony definitely have a powerful effect to promote healing. Reading and writing were used as supplementary treatments for people experiencing emotional or mental distress. This was in the USA is where it all began in Pennsylvania Hospital in the USA. They used the approach 
of literature and poetry as an adjunct to medical treatment as early as the mid-1700s. Then in the 1800s, Dr. Benjamin Rush introduced poetry as a form of therapy for the patients. Further down the line in 1928, poet and pharmacist Eli Griefer began offering poems to people when he was filling their prescriptions for them. So he then started poematherapy groups in two different hospitals. He was supported by Dr. Jack Leedy and Dr. Sam Spector. So after Griefer's death, Leedy and others continued to incorporate poetry into therapeutic practice, eventually coming together to form APT, which was the Association for Poetry Therapy. Now, librarians also played a big part in promoting bibliotherapy and um, poetry therapy in that hospital librarians were very much part of sourcing the right type of books that they felt would be helpful to somebody suffering with depression or under, you know, going through loss and grief. So the bibliotherapist set up a group for people and it was like like a peer group. So people attended the um, the librarians sessions on a regular basis as well. So so they they were being well looked after. And in fact, that they were very forward in their thinking at that time in treating um, s- mental distress. So that's kind of a, a short version of the history, Shona. You are listening to the SRCC podcast, where we are speaking with psychotherapist and poetry therapy practitioner, Jer Campbell. In 2022, SRCC released Memory, a collection of expressive writing and personal stories from survivors and friends of SRCC. If you would like to learn more about Memory or to purchase a copy of the book, please visit our website, srcc.ie. Now back to the interview with Jer. How do you use poetry therapy with groups and individuals? Okay, well, it's probably easier to explain a little bit about how it works. Um, So as part of therapy, people might wish to explore feelings and memories that are buried in the subconscious. And poetry is believed to be beneficial in this process, as it can often be used as a vehicle for expressing emotions that might otherwise be difficult to express. It can promote self-reflection and self-exploration, increasing self-awareness, helping individuals to make sense of their world. And it also helps an individual redefine their situation by opening up new ways of looking at things. It also is known to validate emotional experiences and improve group connectedness by helping people realise that they are not alone and that others have experienced similar issues. And that's why using um, poetry and writing skills in a group setting is very beneficial to everybody. It also, and this is one that so people can kind of overlook, it can help the therapist gain deeper insight into their client, providing a collaborative tool in therapy, in that they're working together. So they're collaborating through the poem and it gives the client a deeper awareness of themselves, but it's also given the therapist a deeper awareness of the client. And finally, when choosing a poem, um, there's a kind of, there's a number of guidelines that need to be followed. And One is that the poem addresses universal emotions, offers some degree of hope and contains plain, understandable language. Some of the poems commonly used are one, The Road Less Travelled by Robert Frost, two, The Journey by Mary Oliver, three, Talking to Grief by Denise Leveratov, four, The Armful by Robert Frost and five, 
I Wandered Lonely as a Cloud by William Wordsworth. And I'm sure most of us remember I Wandered Lonely as a Cloud from school. But um, their nature poems tend to work very well when you're working with clients. And what are the benefits of poetry therapy and expressive writing? Right. I came across this quote the other day by Julia Darling, the author of The Poetry Cure. And I think this sums it up far better than I could sum it up. It's a powerful force which can help us through the darkest times. I would like to see more poets in residence in the health system, more poetry books in waiting rooms, more poems on the walls, more training in creative writing for doctors and more poems printed on primary care leaflets. End of quote. And I know it's slightly utopian, but that does it. It, it is a very powerful force. So moving on there, I just I'll share a little bit more with you that research has found that people who practice expressive writing to help make sense of their thoughts and emotions can experience mental and emotional benefits, including a reduction in stress, anxiety and depression and greater clarity and focus. So it's known to promote healing and can help us better control our emotions to stop obsessing about a traumatic event and instead dead derive meaning from the event leading to healing. It also helps to rewire the brain. And this is the bit I like, because when you write, all parts of your brain are actively engaged. Thanks to the brain's capacity, it can grow and change over time. So just as athletes train their bodies, writers can do the same with their brains. Training yourself to write will help your brain grow and establish new neuronal connections. One question we always like to ask everyone who joins us here on the SRCC podcast is what they like to do for self-care. So, Jer, what do you like to do for self-care? Well, I think getting out for a walk in the fresh air I like to do that. I like to walk beside the river and I find this very calming. Um, I like going on motorbike trips with my long suffering husband and I like family get togethers for celebrations like birthdays, etc. And I love when we all meet up somewhere and stay in a hotel overnight and have a meal together. And I think the one thing that's very important to me is keeping a sense of humour and doing fun things is the best self-care of all. Thanks for listening to the SRCC podcast. If you would like more information, some support, or if you would like to make an appointment, please get in touch with us on 1-800-750-780 or info at srcc.ie. We're here to listen.